You're watching Democratically Speaking, Mark Lindy, your host, and we have yet another election here in the City of Champions. Um, um, Michael Brady, who was the state representative um, in the, I'm just trying to make sure it's the 9th Plymouth District, um, was elected our state senator to replace Tom Kennedy, who passed away earlier this year. And that leaves a vacancy in the State House. So there are three candidates running for state representative, and the first one I'm going to have on, democratically speaking, is Shana Barnes. Shana, welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Good well, to see you again. You too. One campaign's over, I know. another one's starting. I know. Um, Why did you decide to run for state rep? Well, you know, uh, my two years on the council and my eight years experience uh, working with Congressman Lynch, I've really become a lot more intimately involved in how government works on a, a local level and on the federal level. And actually in between that, unofficially, uh, I've been working with various legislators in the state house and getting to, uh, to become involved with how the state government works. And I realize a lot of the things that we do and a lot of the programs that we implement here on the, the local level, it has to do with funding. It has to do with, with law changes. It has to do with the legislation that goes on at the state house. That's where I feel that I could probably bring the biggest impact and, and be a lot more effective um, at the state house. And then the opportunity presented itself, and uh, I, I decided to um, to put my hat uh, in the ring, so to speak, and uh, to also maintain my position as city councilor, you know, not negating or not abandoning the, the entire city of Brockton, the residents of Brockton as a councilor at large, um, and actually continuing on that precedent that, um, as you said, uh, former state representative Mike Brady did when he was elected to that position six years ago. He maintained his what two position on the council, and most recently, uh, Michelle Dubois, she, when she was elected last year to uh, replace retiring state rep uh, Canavan, she also maintained her Ward 6 position. Um, so I feel that I would do the same thing to maintain my council position representing the entire city of Brockton and kind of doing a double duty representing the residents of the 9th Plymouth District as a state representative. And then throw in the federal part, which uh, you do your, um, <laughs> what's your title with Congressman Lynch? A district representative. Okay. So I pretty much represent him when he's not available uh, in the southern part of the 8th Congressional District. So, and I mean more specifically in the office what I do, and, and you know I've, I've probably spoken to everybody in the city of Brockton, um, if they've ever had a, a, a problem with a federal agency, I specifically do immigration issues, um, helping folks with uh, loved ones that are, are overseas, having problems with stalled uh, petitions and applications to Department of Homeland Security, Department of State, USCIS, which is uh, United States Citizenship and Immigration Services, um, Passport Services. I also do Social Security work for our seniors. Um, I don't do veterans. Um, there's another gentleman that does veterans. I do some housing things and some IRS things. So I'm all over. Well, I'm going to have to talk to you afterwards because I have a, 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 <laughs> a, 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 I think it's a Medicare question. Okay, yep, I do that too. Um, yeah, we do. I funny do enough, my father, mm -hmm. who speaks Spanish, okay. all of his documents started coming through in Spanish now. So I don't even know who to call to find out. He must have pressed out. two or something. He must have pressed two. <laughs> he and, must have pressed two. And I haven't had a chance to ask him because what he does when the telemarketers call him is he talks in Spanish instead of in English and they go away, uh, yeah. which is kind of funny. Um, the, the race is the dead of winter. Yes. You're talking election day, preliminary election day, primary, I'm sorry, primary, primary. election day. Let's go we're back to party because right. you're a Democrat. That is correct. Okay. Is Proud February Democrat. 2nd. I have been since I was 18 years old. Me too. February 2nd. That's yes. why we're on Democratically Speaking, yes. right? Yes. Um, uh, talk about that. That is the dead of winter. That means you've got to have dedicated people that go out to hold signs for you, that show up to vote, that get out of, get out of bed and vote. Right. Hopefully the weather's not going to be a factor like it was last year. Right. But uh, what do you have to do to motivate people to come out and vote for Shana Barnes on February 2nd? You know, when I first announced, um, and you, you, were, you were privy to, to my announcement that day, it started right then. I got flooded with calls, emails, tell me what you need. We think you'd be a great representative uh, at, the, at the State House. We think that you can represent our needs and our initiatives appropriately and effectively like, like you have proven these last two years on the council and uh, in representing Congressman Lynch. So the, the help is actually, uh, I've been blessed enough to have the help come to me. Um, and people are, are they're, they're ready. They're ready to go. They have their, their, you know, their duck boots ready to get out in the snow. We're all, you know, kind of looking every morning. We're looking through the shades like, you know, okay, let's see what's going on this morning. Um, and everybody's waiting and looking. But, but I, I think 
the people that believe in my mission, um, they're ready to, to really hit the streets for me and, and to do those things for me. And I, I, I couldn't be more appreciative um, because we all win in the end. And you know, it might be my name on the ballot, but it's for everybody. I represent everybody. So we, we all win in the end. How does the ballot go? I'm trying to remember when I ran for rep, is it, is it, is it alphabetical or do you get to pick? I'm I can't assuming, remember. I'm assuming it's alphabetical. Mm -hmm. I'm not 100% sure. That actually, I, I hadn't really even... And you've got ABC in this that. race. Right, I know. I know you never say the name of the other opponent, so I'm not going to ask you to do that. Okay. We'll let them do that when I have them on. Okay. Okay, and maybe they'll say your name and maybe they won't, but you've okay. got A, a B, and a C. Yeah. Which is very interesting. I don't yeah. remember when that ever happened. Yeah. But um, talk about you. Talk about your qualifications. Talk about your background. Mm -hmm. we, we know what you do as a, a counselor, as, as the aide to Congressman Lynch, mm -hmm. but what about going backwards? So you were talking about being a Democrat since you were 18. Right. Um, school, I'm Brockton School. Mm -hmm. um, I know you went to Northeastern. Mm -hmm. Talk about what you went to school for and what you sought to do in life. W did you know back in high school that, no. did you ever think that you'd be running for state rep? No. No, I, you know, and that's the thing. Somebody actually asked me the other day um, kind of what my three-year plan is or a five-year plan. People always get that, like, what's your five-year plan? And I, I remember doing that and uh, kind of just having everything all planned out. And then as soon as kind of things didn't, it's not that if it didn't work out, but I just realized that what my plan, the plan that I had last year didn't fit who I've evolved into this year or the next year so I don't ever want to put myself in those kinds of boxes ever I don't ever want to do that and, and I'll, I just want to be ready when an opportunity presents itself and that's how I went forward two years ago in running for the city council position two spaces were available I evaluated the landscape realized that I had something I felt of value to offer to my community so I, I, I put it out there fortunately and, and thank, thank God uh, the voters of Brockton they bought onto that and they bought that idea that I had something to, to give and, and to, to contribute. Um, and they had confidence in me and they believed that I could do it. And then again, uh, in November, they also had overwhelming confidence in me and reelecting me. So I'm just asking that they have that they continue the confidence in me to bring their, their issues and bring their voice, you know, from the streets of Brockton to the chambers of the, the uh, city hall and then on to uh, the dome uh, of the state house, under the dome of the state house. So, but I mean, going back to um, kind of where I grew up, Brockton girl, my parents met um, in Washington, D.C. My dad played pro ball. My mom uh, met her. So she was the original basketball wife. Okay. Not like what we see on TV today, but well, that's for tomorrow. Um, so um, they got married. Didn't work out. You know, here I am. My mom is a Brockton, uh, native Brocktonian. Uh, the Williams family grew up on the east side. Um, and so she came back home with me, maintained a great relationship with my dad. They just, you know, couldn't stay married. So I uh, attended uh, Brockton, uh, actually, South Shore Christian School when it was open over at the North Baptist Church. And then they closed. And then I went to Hancock School and West Junior High, uh, and then to Cardinal Spellman, and then to Northeastern, like you said, for um, all of my my uh, college education and you know graduate education um, and then came back uh, here to Brockton to work in the Plymouth County District Attorney's Office and that, at the time it was Michael Sullivan mm -hmm. uh, who's you know very involved still in the city of Brockton um, in many different ways I serve with him now uh, on the board of the Old Colony YMCA mm -hmm. and um, I worked in that office for several years and then an opportunity presented itself um, to work for DYS and to help jump start a new program, a juvenile notification, offender notification program. Um, and I did that for some time, worked right over here on Bolton Street with some of the folks there. I still actually communicate with some of them. One of my colleagues actually, Sean Beasley, he's now at, uh, the director of, um, of uh, uh, DTA. Right. So I'm still, you know, working with him. And then that was actually a grant position. The grant ran out and an opportunity presented itself for me to work at uh, DSA, or D DCF now, mm -hmm. um, right over here on Mulberry Street. And again, I'm still in communication with all, all the folks over there. And, and you know, I s in my day position, it's, it's kind of funny. It's funny, ironic. I, I still kind of get calls indirectly mm -hmm. with all of those three agencies that I, I've, I've worked with, public safety, child welfare, and detention. 
Mm -hmm. um, and all of those things kind of work together. They're just kind of different spectrums of the same scale. Um, and and it's, it's really, it's interesting to me that I'm still really involved in all of that. And now in my professional pr position as a, a counselor, um, you know, I get a whole nother legislative uh, kind of arm on that spectrum. So those state agencies, mm -hmm. you get, you don't necessarily get your pick if you get elected. And I, mm -hmm. I don't want to have you elected quite yet. Okay? <laughs> so you I do. Show, but <laughs> what committees would you want to serve on? on Beacon Hill if right. you were fortunate enough to win the, the primary and then the general election? Well, several of the things that I'm really passionate about are the things that I have experience in. So the public safety, definitely. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, you know, on the campaign trail, the re-election trail just this past fall, uh, uh, spring and fall, the number one issue for the residents of Brockton, public safety, mm -hmm. and the perception of, of, you know, the streets not possibly being safe and just kind of a whole, you know, line of, of things that could be happening, people, what people think is going on, um, but something that really is going on. We don't have a whole lot of control over what happens after someone gets arrested. The Brockton Police, the, the men and women of the Brockton Police Department, they're out there every single day busting heavy, trying to, to get these suspects and get these perpetrators. They arrest them. They go to the, dist the district attorney's office, the district attorney's office and the um, ADAs and all of the employees there under Tim Cruz now, they work tirelessly to put together a case, uh, an ironclad case to make sure that these people aren't back on our streets just committing crimes and, and going all, all health and skelter in our streets. By the time it goes up to court, that's where things start to break down, in my opinion. We need some real criminal justice reform. And those are things that I want to take a look at. I have, I have the background in detention and in law enforcement um, and, and uh, um, uh, the, at the, D, excuse me, the DA's, DA's office, office. Yeah. with regard to prosecution. Um, so those are something that I want to take a look at. Let's take a look at the laws. There's no reason someone should be arrested at 10 o'clock in the morning with a gun or, you know, with drugs or something, pay their bail, a low set bail, and then be out again to get arrested again at 2.30, 3 o'clock. That's inappropriate on anybody's standard. Mm -hmm. So that's something we need to take a look at. And, and it also it ties in with um, a lot of other social service things that we need to take a look at, but that's one of the things that, that I'm really interested in, um, and I would love to get on the, the, a public safety um, committee if, if I could, if I had a choice. Um, and also the child welfare. Mm -hmm. Recent... Um, the recent instances that have happened with some of the neglect cases that we've seen in the news and the ones that we don't see, the ones that, like I said, that call my office mm -hmm. um, and, and they're on a more local level, a more uh, tangible level, there are some things that we need to change. There are some, some policies we need to take a look at. Some things have been on the books you know, with regard to public safety and laws and some of the child welfare uh, policies since Massachusetts was, was incepted. So we need, to, we need to really figure those things out and take a look at that and really make sure that how we behave and how these agencies work and work when they, they come into families, that it's for the, the family of the 2015. We need to take a look at that. So those are two, two of the things. I got a bunch of others, but... I want to back <laughs> you up a little bit. Okay. Cardinal Spellman. I yes. know you're very proud of Cardinal Spellman. Very. Okay. Cardinal Spellman seems to me, from all of our, our dealings with them, mm -hmm. we came and recorded a class that Andy Card uh, Bush's chief of staff came and talked to the kids. Okay. They instill public service. There's a whole public service right. component of that. Is that kind of where it started for you? You know, we had to, before we graduated, we actually had to do several um, hours of community service. I can't remember what it was. It's been probably like 50 hours, I think, in one of the semesters. Um, and two of my friends and I, we actually chose to do recreation services at the VA. Mm -hmm. And um, I've actually always, I, I don't know if, I don't know if that's where it started, but I think it's just always been something I've done. I, I've just not, I've always kind of done that. That's what my family, that's what we do. If, and if we want to really go back and I want to kind of, as I talk, think, um, it probably goes back to my upbringing in, in my church, Mount Mariah, right around the corner. Um, we've always, food pantry, I've always been involved in the food pantry. Um, I've always been involved in, in the, the, the feeding the homeless pro uh, programs that they've had, the, the luncheon that they have, um, all of those things. We had a distribution ministry that I was um, like a co-ish director of for like for a little while, um, but I've always done that. It's just it's just something that's it's just in, yeah, in it's you. what I okay. do. Yeah. Northeastern. What did, what was your major? What did you go there for? For I, I heard while we were talking off air that uh, you were a weather 
Yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So talk about <laughs> Northeastern. Right. So uh, when, and actually Northeastern, it's funny, Northeastern, they were the last school to accept me. I was accepted to like Framingham and I think UMass and a couple others. Um, in Northeastern, they were the, that, was, that was the last school I applied to and the last school to accept me. And I went there and I went to the campus and I was like, you know, I was like, I really like it here. I think I can, think I can do something. I like it and I like the people that I met. So um, when I went in, gung-ho, I was going to be a journalist. Oh my goodness, that was it. I was going to be on TV. It, oh yeah, it was all set, all ready. So um, I went into communications and um, actually English Lit, I think I did that for a little while. And then I... I was on the radio, WRBB, uh, and I did the weather and news kind of breakup for a friend who had a, like a radio show or something. And um, I don't know, for some reason, something else kind of caught my eye, and then I was like, you know what? When I, w I went back to how I, what I wanted to do when I was a kid, I wanted to be a veterinarian because I love animals, and I wanted to do that. But I don't know, man, that chemistry, it got me. It just, it just kind of grabbed a hold of me, and it wouldn't let go. So I was like, you know what? I took, at the time, they had the Myers-Briggs personality test. Mm -hmm. And uh, Northeastern, it was five years at the time, so I was in my third year, and I was just like, I gotta figure something out. I gotta do something with myself. I did the Myers Briggs, and, I, and it, it came back that um, law, policy, criminal justice, that those are things that came natural to me. Um, those are things, that the concepts, I understood them well, and I was able to um, effectively translate and, and interpret what was going on and, and internalize it. So I then turned to criminal justice, and I busted it out and finished it. Um, I finished out with criminal justice. So that led you to all the different jobs that we already talked about. The DA's office, dealing with DYS, DCF, every kind of all... Ultimately, kind of yeah. Ultimately it did. And again, like I said, you know, all of those actually were opportunities that were presented to me. Um, mm -hmm. You know, people came to me like, hey, there's an opportunity around, are you looking to advance your career? Um, and it just happened to kind of be in that same vein. So, you know, I, I my... It, it just kind of worked out that way. Now, I know something you're very proud of. You talk about it all the time, and uh, we'll, we'll talk about communication, social media yeah. in a minute, but your sorority. Yes. Talk about that and talk about the, how that shaped you, and mm -hmm. I know they do community service activities as well. Yes, and that's one of the, the ma major tenets, um, sisterhood, scholarship, and service. Mm -hmm. Those are the main tenets of um, my sorority, which is Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated. It's a uh, traditionally black Greek letter organization, one of the, what's called Divine Nine in the Panhellenic Council. And pretty much it, it's, it's, it's exactly what you said um, we strive or we, we try to encourage uh, young girls and actually there's now a new program where we engage young boys um, in making sure that they are as proficient as they can be in a lot of the STEM the science and the mm -hmm. technology uh, issues um, also in the arts they have the STEAM program now um, and they're, they're starting to incorporate the arts into making sure that kids are as competitive as they can be going out into this world Back when, when I was a kid, all you really needed was a, a college degree to be able to really be successful and to advance. Nowadays, you've got to have a PhD and you've got to have you know, all of these other kinds of things to even be considered mm -hmm. for entry level at, mm -hmm. at some, some places because the competition is so high. Um, so we definitely want to make sure that we are making our next generation, the kids now, ready and, and, make, and making sure that, that they're in that readiness state uh, for ad advancement. But, you know, for the most part, I'm actually working with them to do what our sister sorority, the uh, Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated, what they have done with Mulberry Park. They've adopted that park. And they, all summer, spring and summer, they had activities in there. Um, I attended a lot of those activities that they had. I mean, they're, they're our sisters. Um, and several of the members, they live here in Brockton and in the surrounding areas. So I've actually uh, proposed to my sorority that we may want to adopt Roscoe, the new Roscoe Park, mm -hmm. that the BRA, that they're leveling now over on Warren Ave. Okay. Uh, and maybe we can, we can start to do that. And I, I actually brought it out to several of the male fraternity organizations uh, to see if they want to adopt some parks too because it's important that our kids in this community and in a community being majority minority community mm -hmm. that they see, first of all, that you can be of color and you don't have to be in the streets. You don't have to carry a gun. You don't have to do all these things that kids are doing. You can go to school. You can get a degree. Mm -hmm. You can be successful and you can still be cool and doing it. So they need to see those role models. They need to see those successful men that are working at the Fortune 500 companies that wear a bow tie to work, that um, can also you know, play softball and are fathers in the home 
taking care of their responsibilities, that attend church, that have morals and values. They need to see that on a regular basis. So um, the fraternities, they're very, very interested in also taking on a few of the parks. Edgar Park um, is one that we're looking at um, to take over for them to, to be able to kind of you know, monitor in there. Not, not, not as like a police presence or right. the tiny angels or anything, but just to have fun family activities, opening it up, making it a, a real place that people can go uh, for some fun time. So we're all, we're all getting to do that. There's so many things that you talked about I that know. I can <laughs> talk about each one of them, but let's, let's, let's uh, okay. stay with arts for a minute. Okay. I, I got parks too, and we'll talk about that, and you know why we're going to talk about yes, that. Yes, I But let's know. talk about <laughs> arts. Okay. I saw you, I had the opportunity to see you a mm -hmm. few years ago mm -hmm. over at the Orpheum Theater in... Foxborough, uh -huh, and you did yeah. a kind of mean Tina Turner. You did the I, oh yeah, okay, remember that? <laughs> that was the end of the but, wedding but singer, yeah. you really got into performing arts. Mm -hmm. And when you talked about STEM, mm -hmm. science, technology, education, and math, mm -hmm. or engineering and math, and then you threw the A in it, which is arts, right? Performing arts. Were you involved in that at Spelman? No, no, not at all. Okay, no, not one bit. Sure didn't. Um, I didn't actually get involved, at, really involved, and in, develop passion for it until like 2003. I did my first show at Massasoit, okay, and it was Godspell, and I loved it. Absolutely loved it. Absolutely loved it. And I've been in almost all of the shows, or somehow affiliated with all of the shows that Massasoit has put on since then. Until recently, I just haven't had the time. Right. Um, but I mean, I've also done shows at Bay Colony down in Foxborough. I've done shows at the Norwell Company Theater. I've been in shows. Oh God! Oh, I, I, until I think last year, I was, um, I performed as uh, Mary in Black Nativity in Boston mm -hmm. for almost 22 years, I think. So you still get the showbiz part in you too. You yeah. That radio announcing and yeah. all that stuff. It never goes away. Once it, it bites you, it's, it's like a spider bite. It just never I goes away. I started out <laughs> politics and law and then I went into communications and media. So I kind of switched it around. <laughs> um, parks. Yes. You have a, a pending proposal yes. right now that's that that we're moving through and, yes. and we're partnered together on yes. it at Southeastern Regional with our great kids that right. have helped like Lynn Smith out with the parks yes. and everything like that. Dog park. Yep. You it, love animals, so that's where it came from. I do. Every time I I, I drove by there today and I was just kind of like, uh, and I was looking. I was like, we can put the the house that um that Superintendent Lopes proposed right there and the fire hydrants here. The only thing we're, the the thing we're still working on is the liability and uh, working right. with the law department. And I've I've been in communication with our city solicitor to see how we can incorporate adding that extra piece with the, with animals to our existing park policies and liability policies so because it is it's a real thing I mean if somebody gets hurt or if something happens um, we need to be able to, to protect ourselves and to protect the residents as well mm -hmm. protect the animals and, and how to do that so it's, it's a little bit longer of a process than I would have ever expected I just thought you could just erect some some things in there and kind of do tape, it right yeah Red tape that's and what happens it. but it's a good collaboration yeah. and you know kids are excited about it I we, am too. the kids this year with Brockton the slave for Santa the uh, holiday yeah. parade they did. That was amazing. The signs that were in Frederick Douglass Park, yes. um, the little libraries, yes. all sorts of stuff going on. So yes. Southeastern's a, 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 a big thing. I I'm, saw I'm, them I'm gonna put on the I'm going to put on the proud Southeastern. Yeah, no, okay. absolutely. And, and you know that's why I wanted to incorporate them because um, I know how much they love it. You can see it. The, the day that we went there and, and took the tour, you can see on the kids' faces how much they really enjoyed what they did and how they were really taking advantage of their opportunity to go to Southeastern. And um, and I mean if they can highlight that and do that in the city, and then people can see what their kids are actually doing. You don't see what they're doing six hours a day. We get 200 kids on the waiting list from Brockton. Awesome. The waiting list this year, you get 300 slots and we probably have about 900 applications. Awesome. It's crazy. And awesome. Brockton kids love it. Awesome. Mentoring. How yeah. important. I know one of your big cheerleader mentors is mom. Yeah. I saw <laughs> mom with you yesterday <laughs> over at the senior luncheon. Yeah. Okay, the holiday party. Yeah. How important is that to you? You know, um, I I rarely kind of talk about about it really because um you know people like to she might get a big head but um no I I would be lost absolutely lost and just mindless and brainless without her she's the number my number one cheerleader um, along with with my uncles um, Ken and Sam and my all my family members uh, you know that are, are close to me here um, she'll do anything. She'll do anything for me, and and it's invaluable. And you know, I, I a lot of people envy uh, the relationship that we have. You know, I'm grown now, so I mean, she's still my mom, but you know, we're also like buddies and friends, and like we you know take road trips and stuff, and I take her on you know little field trips and everything. Um, and I mean, I'll, I'll I'll give her the world. I'll do anything for her, and I I love her. I love you, mom. There we go. There we go. <laughs> yeah. So you know, she's 
She's absolutely, and, and again, I mean, she taught for 40 years, you know, in, in the school system, so she has a soft place for, for children, for other people's children, um, and for me as her own child, so it just, it radiates, and um, she's a great role model, and I love her. Mentors, how important have they been to you, mm -hmm. and do you feel that you're a mentor to others? Oh, you know what? Oh, see, yeah, that's a, that's a, like a loaded question. Um, it always kind of, kind of throws me off a little if somebody comes up or like a, a kid or somebody will come up and I've, I've not ever met this child, never met their parent or anything and then they'll say like, oh, we watch you, we see you on TV and, you know, we see you in the street or we see you here, there and everywhere. You never know who's watching and you always have to, you have to maintain yourself and, and make sure that you are being as responsible as you can be all the time because somebody is always watching and, and again, like in my sorority, like that's what we, we target the kids that we want to make sure that we pull in and, and like I said, you know, have them ready for, for what's going on. But it's what people see when you're not looking that kind of matters. Uh, and, and that's what I, tr I, try to, I try to maintain myself all the time. I, I've not changed. I'm still the same person. If you ask anybody that knows me, I'm still the same person. It's weird, like that little girl that used to run around in social Christian school, you know, in her uniform, that used to lose her glasses and her keys might be somebody that other kids look up to. It's, it's, it's still kind of, I don't know, it's still kind of, kind of weird a little bit. Think about that. We'll talk about it more <laughs> next time around. Okay. Um, this, we're going to have another opportunity. We're going to try to do two shows at least, and we're hoping to get you guys all together so you oh, people can compare and contrast. That would be great. But um, how would people get in touch with you? What are you looking for in the campaign? And just give them all your contact information. You are you're you're a social media queen, so people know how to get in touch with you. <laughs> yes. Uh, well, I do have an official campaign page. Uh, Shana M. Barnes, I believe, the state representative, ninth Plymouth District. I believe that's what it says. It is my file photo is on there. So if anybody clicks on it, they'll they'll see that and recognize uh, me in the red jacket. Mm -hmm. uh, I also have an email that folks can send me an email. It's S M B. F O R T H E, the number nine. Yeah. T H at gmail dot com. So it's S M B for the ninth at gmail dot com, and also they can contact me on my cell phone. It's five zero eight six eight zero six nine one four. Um, I always return a call. I may not always pick up, but I, I always return the call. And if they can't find you, they're not trying. Exactly. Because you got lots of emails. I'm in the streets. I'm all over the place. All over the place. Yeah. Okay. Well, Shane, it's been a pleasure. Oh, can so, I say one more thing? Sure. Officially. I know we were talking about kind of, you know, the candidacy and what my plans are. Yeah. Um, but I actually got word today from the Elections Commission's office that um, all my signatures are in. And I am confirmed. I will be on the ballot. All I need to do is bring them to the, the Secretary, of, uh, Governor's, uh, Secretary, Secretary of State's office mm -hmm. and um, have them officially certified. But Shana Marie Barnes will be on your ballot on February 2nd. Um, and I ask that people consider uh, voting for me and having confidence in me once again uh, to represent them at the State House uh, on February 2nd, Shana Marie Barnes. Thanks, Shana. Pleasure having you on Democratically Speaking. Thank you. I enjoyed it. Anytime. You're watching Democratically Speaking. Mark Linda, your host. Stay tuned for more candidates uh, running in the next election. And just remember, there's always an election. Make sure you <laughs> register to vote. Make sure you show up and vote. Have a good day.